Sometimes we need a way to manually run our loader and action function programmatically. As we stand now, there's no way for us to run the loader and action function manually. The loader is triggered whenever the component was mounted to the DOM, while the action is triggered when we submit the form. Now there's a good number of reasons why we might want to programmatically trigger these two functions. For example, if we want to refetch the data from the API server, we need to rerun the loader function. Or when we want to perform some sort of custom validation in a form, we might want to trigger the action function manually after we have checked all the user input inside the form. Now in order for us to run the loader and action function programmatically, we will need to use a new hook called useFetcher. In short, the useFetcher hook will return us a fetcher object that provided us a handy API to work with the loader and the action. Let's see how this thing works. To get started, we first need to call the useFetcher hook. Now to programmatically call the loader function, we can use the load method provided by the fetcher object. And just for demonstration, I'll chuck a use effect here and manually call the load function after two seconds. Now when we call the load method from the fetcher object, we gotta pass in an argument. And the argument is the URL of the route. In our case, we wish to call the loader function of the user details page. Therefore, we simply need to chuck in the URL of the user details page inside the load function. A takeaway here is that you can technically call any loader function in your app by using the fetcher load method. You just need to pass in the correct URL. Now it is very common that we need to call the loader function of the current route. And if you're like me, where I have got a very bad memory, when I don't even remember what I had for breakfast today, I'll be honest with you, I can't remember what the current route is. To make our life better and lazier, what we can do here is we can call the use location hook to grab the location object. And from the location object, we can read the path name property to get the current route. That way, we can simply call the load function dynamically. And even if in the future, if we change the URL, our page would still work. And just for demonstration, I'll console out some message inside our loader function. And we'll give this bad boy a run. We'll head to our browser. And upon clicking on a refresh button, take a look at a console. When a component was mounted, we see ABC gets printed out for the first time. And after two seconds, the loader function gets triggered again, and therefore we see another ABC. Again, we're seeing two ABCs in a second console log because we are currently having strict mode turned on. So far, so good. Let's move on. We will see how to programmatically run the action function in our code. To do that, we'll call the submit method on our fetcher object. The first argument is the payload of this submit request. Whatever you put inside here will become the body of the request. You can also put in an HTML form element here if you wish. We will set it to now at the time being. Now the second argument is the important one. It is an object for us to configure the method and the action of the submit request. So we can specify our method to be post here and the action is the URL of the submit request, so we can just use location.pathName. If you want to call a different action function, simply supply the corresponding URL inside the action option. Next, I'll modify the action function, so it's more obvious in our browser console log. All right, let's give this a go. We'll go to our browser, refresh the page, and as you can see here, our component did send out an action request. However, if you look at the form data inside our request, it's empty at the moment because we have set now as the first argument inside the submit function. Let's fix that. I'll put in some dummy value as the body. And let's see what happens next. Back to our browser, hit refresh. And now we see hey you inside the form data. Isn't that simple? All right, let's move on. So the fetcher object does provide us some other properties that we can use over the life cycle of a submit request. For example, we can read the state of the fetcher by reading the state property on the fetcher object. The state is a string that can either be one of these three, idle, submitting, or loading. The state is idle when nothing is being fetched, it is submitting when the form is sending out the request, and it is loading when the loader is being called. The form data property is the form data inside the payload of the submission request. 
form action is the target URL of the form submission, and form method is the corresponding method. The data property is the return result of either the action or the loader function, depending on which one is calling in a life cycle. And lastly, form ENC type is the encoding type of the submission. It could be JSON or form data. And now let's go to the browser and look at how this console log will turn out inside the console. Okay, now you can see that initially all the fields are undefined because there was no form submission when the component was first mounted and the state is idle initially. However, after two seconds, the state becomes submitting and we can see that there's something popping up for each of the property. The form data is a form data object where we need to unpack it to see the data inside it using object.from entries. We'll do that shortly just for demonstration. And we can see the URL of the submitting target and also the method, but the data is undefined because the data property represent the data returned by the action function, which is not resolved yet. And if we go further down inside the console log history, towards the end, once everything is settled, the state changed back into idle and the form data, form action, form method, and etc. became undefined again. However, this time, the data property is now showing the result of the action function. And that is exactly what we are expecting. And now let's go back to our code and try to unpack the form data so we can see that inside our console log. As discussed previously, in order for us to convert form data into object, we simply need to call the object.fromEntries function, and that should just work. However, we do have an issue here. The form data property could be undefined. And if we put undefined inside the from entries function, JavaScript will not be happy about it. So what we should do here is to give this from entries a fallback. If form data is undefined, then we'll give it a fallback of an empty new form data object. And that should do the job. Let's go back to our browser. And as you can see inside the console, we're able to see the content of the form data object now. And one last thing before we end the lesson, the fetcher object actually provided us another property called form. And it is a non-navigating substitute for the default form component provided by React Router. The default behavior of the form component is that React Router will redirect us to the action URL once we have submitted the form. If we don't want this default behavior, then we can use the fetcher form component instead. All right, that's basically everything that we need to know about the fetcher API. We'll go deeper into the React Router in the next lesson. All right, key takeaways for this lesson. The use fetcher hook returns us a fetcher object that contains a powerful API to programmatically trigger the loader and action function of a particular route. The load function on a fetcher object will trigger the loader while the submit function will trigger the action. The form property inside the fetcher object is a non-navigating version of the default form element provided by React Router. The state property can either be idle, submitting, or loading. This is useful to render the loading UI of a particular component. That's it for now, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you would like to see more content, Consider supporting us by becoming a member at my website, Acadia.io. It is similar to Patreon, but in return, you get a lot of premium tutorials and lessons. If you can't become a member, that's totally fine. We are just happy that you are here. We spend a lot of time and energy to produce high quality videos for you. Feel free to check out our other videos on YouTube. And if you can leave a thumbs up, you will really make my day. If you subscribe, I would jump for joy and I'll make more videos for you. Thanks for your support and I'll see you next time.